The WebSocket protocol is a complement to the standard hypertext transfer protocol, or HTTP, that creates a persistent connection between servers and clients, allowing two-way communication between them in a way that isn't possible in HTML. The result is that you can make real-time applications, like chat apps and game servers, that are a lot more interactive than normal web pages. Now, HTTP is a great protocol. It's the protocol underlying virtually every web application you've ever used. Let's review it briefly. Notice that it's conventional to say HTTP protocol, even though the P here actually stands for protocol. So this is the hypertext transfer protocol, and in this protocol we have a server where the client, which is like a web browser, issues an HTTP request, say in this case a GET request maybe for a web page, example.com, and then the server returns a response. In this case, say a web page that has a header that says example domain. This design is what's known as half duplex because only one half of the server client combination is communicating at any one time. This is the same design used in things like walkie talkies. So the way walkie talkie works is you press a switch and talk, but since you're using the same communication band as the person receiving, you can't both be talking at the same time. So you have to say something like over when you're done talking, then the other person can start talking. But if HTTP is like a walkie talkie, WebSockets is like a mobile phone. Both people can be talking at the same time. Let's take a look at this illustrated. It's not important to understand all the details here. The basic idea is that each client, say in this case each web browser for multiple users, initiates a connection with the server using what's called a WebSocket request. Once each WebSocket communication channel is established, as illustrated here, then the client and server can communicate with each other and the same goes for each client. So everyone is talking to the server and the server can talk to the client. So what that means, for example, is that you could submit a form which sends information from the client to the server, but at the same time the server can be sending information, pushing it down to the client. And it can be responding. So if one client sends a message to the server, the server can immediately send a message back down to a different client. This is the kind of thing that will allow us to make a chat application. This is what it'll look like. This is the chat app we'll be working with in this tutorial. Now within the constraint of HTTP, imagine how you might write a chat app. Suppose that Alice and Bob are in a chat. So in HTTP, Alice would have to submit a message, and then Bob would have to refresh his browser in order to get the message. That's really inconvenient, though. So the traditional solution within HTTP was what's called polling, which is to send a request using JavaScript, typically, from the client to the server every three seconds, say, just is some standard amount of time, and pull in any new messages that appear. This isn't a disaster, and in fact, the chat app for Basecamp, which was the original Rails app, used polling for years. But it's not as good as it could be, and as Rails creator David Heinemeyer Hansen has noted, using WebSockets is even better, as long as it's not too hard. Making it not too hard is the purpose of Action Cable. Using Action Cable and WebSockets, Alice can submit a request, like here, and the server can immediately push down the message to another client, say Bob's web browser, so that a chat app will be quick and responsive. The purpose of the rest of this tutorial is to implement such a chat app using Action Cable. We'll start by giving a high-level overview of the base app, illustrated here, and then we'll take a brief detour for a crash course in the aspects of JavaScript, including CoffeeScript, needed to make the chat app. We'll then upgrade the base app to use WebSockets with Action Cable, and then we'll add some refinements and some more advanced extensions. Finally, we'll deploy the application to production.